This is uh, our fourth uh, meeting, and it's a uh, continuation of the lecture number three. Uh, I started lecture number three yesterday, and I had about, I mean, yesterday lecture, last lecture, and I had about like uh, uh, two hours and a little bit more, perhaps around that, for uh, deployment of wireless lands. And then I had around 55 minutes for deployment of cellular networks. Uh, today, what I'm going to do, I'm going to just solve like two, three problems, like example problems, which uh, helps uh, the derivations that we had last time. So, and also helps you in doing your homeworks. Uh, in addition to that, since we had like uh, uh, both assignment three and project due to today, I have changed the assignment three, and uh, now it's due to next week rather than today. When it goes due to next week, in addition to previous problems that we had, I have added this problem 4.5, which is related to the material that I will solve today, or I will talk about today, and I will do some examples. Uh, Material to support that problem are provided in section 4 to 5 that uh, also is covered in the second half of this lecture. So for the first half, I give you some examples which are somehow perhaps related to problems that we have uh, in chapter 5. And then in the second half, I give you uh, some material which are related to uh, problem 4.5, which is your assignment for next week. So this is basically a problem solving like session, if you want to call it, and a little bit of lecture. Uh, to start, I think I will go to the lecture three first. And in lecture three, if you remember what we did, Uh, we went uh, for like deployment of the wireless lands, and then we had some examples on the interference in unlicensed bands, in particular between Bluetooth and 802.11. Then we started to talk about deployment of cellular networks, and in the last 10 minutes we talked about expansion techniques. What I would do today, I go to those expansion techniques, I redo them, and then there are some calculations in there that I didn't go over. Now I will go over them in details. So that would be the first half of the lecture. The second half would be the first part of lecture four, which is medium access control. So uh, these are the material related to the wireless LAN and the project that you handed in today. And then we, these are material related to Bluetooth and interference in the Bluetooth. Possibly we come back to that later on. And then this was infrastructure network in license bands. Basically, we said that uh, when you do the deployment for wireless LANs, this is an uh, unlicensed environment. So interference is un un not controlled, uncontrolled, OK? Whether it is intentional or unintentional. If it's in the military application, people have intentional interference. In non-military, they have unintentional interference. Now, uh, but anyways, the interference is uncontrolled. You cannot control the interference in unlicensed bands. But when you come to the license bands and cellular systems in particular, you are uh, you're controlling the interference. So you have, the, you, have a, you have an environment which is a controlled interference environment. How do you control, control the interference? You adjust the distance between the cell uh, base stations to control the interference. And this is only for voice-oriented networks that we do these calculations. So we have a connection-based network in there. 
So basically, we went over like the concept of uh, cellular, why people do the frequency reuse in particular. And uh, we came up to the fact that frequency reuse is in there because now you can have more number of users, more number of subscribers. And uh, the important issue was that now, if you make your cell smaller and smaller, your capacity increases. Now, today we do some examples to relate to the capacity, just to make life a little bit easier. Now, then we talked about cellular hierarchy, that we have these uh, mega cells, which are like, like satellite cells. Then we have macro cells, which are the cells for, uh, for the antennas, like close to highways, wide area coverage. Then we have micro, uh, mic micro cells, which are like cells which are covering streets in the downtown. Then we have pico cells, which are cells which are covering uh, an area inside a building. And then we have femo cell, which could be an area that connects like Bluetooth stuff to one another, personal stuff to one another. Now, we talked about shape of the shape of the cells and the frequency reuse factor. And we said frequency reuse factor only can get numbers like this, which are like 1, 3, 4, 7, 9, 12, 13, 16, etc. And then for the calculation of uh, this frequency reuse pattern, we have the ratio of distance to between two cells which are using the same frequency and the radius of a cell to be equal to a square root of 3n. And if we go in further like detail, we can relate that to the signal to noise ratio by this equation. So signal to interference ratio in each cell is given to by 1 over js, which are number of identical interfering cells around the cell times distance between the two cells, which are using the same frequency, over r, which is the radius of the cell, to the power of alpha. This alpha can be different values. In cellular network, especially for macro cells, usually they use value of 4 for that. That's the most popular value. 1 over js, if you put rather than d to r, the numbers that we had calculated earlier, which are related to n, then we have 1 over js a square root of 3n to the power of alpha. This n is your frequency reuse factor. So signal to interference ratio is related to frequency reuse factor. And if we sketch them, for example, for alpha equal to 4 and js equal to 6, we end up to something like that. This is for frequency reuse factor of 3, 4, 7, 12, 13, and 19. And these are signal to noise ratio requirement in order to have a successful operation. Now, uh, so if you have like a system, for example, that system comes with a signal to noise or signal to interference requirement. For example, AMP systems, they have signal to noise ratio in requirement of 18 dB. You come to these charts, and you see this guy, for example, a k equal to 7, or n equal to 7, provides 18.6 dB, which is passing over 18 dB. So you say that this is the frequency reuse factor that we will select. OK. So basically, signal to interference ratio requirement, which is coming from the modem design, is related to the frequency reuse factor. OK. And this chart relates them in a macro cell environment. Now, uh, capacity, generally, if you want to calculate the capacity in a cellular network, then is calculated by n, the number of simultaneous users in one cell, to be equal to the bandwidth divided by frequency reuse factor divided by bandwidth per user times user per carrier. And uh, 
based on that, we did some calculations for amps, and we did some calculations for IS-136. And then we came to the expansion techniques. For expansion techniques, we very quickly, last time, we went over like a, a bunch of, in fact, techniques using directional antennas for cell sectorization, using overlaid cells and least microcell method, cell splitting, and using a smart antennas. And then after that, we talked about channel allocation techniques and uh, uh, fixed channel assignment and dynamic channel assignment. This is more or less summary of what we did last time. Now we continue on the same thing, but by solving a couple of examples just to make you more comfortable in using these calculations of signal to interference ratio and relate that to the capacity. The first example that I will pick up perhaps is this one. That's example using sectored antenna. We went over that last time very quickly, but we can go over that now a little bit slower just to have a pace for, uh, for the for the solution of the problem. Now, in this particular example, we have n equal to 7 uh, means frequency reuse factor is uh, 7. And then we have Js equal to 6. OK. When Js equal to 6 means that we have 6 neighbors. If this is the cell, we have 6 neighbors around it, which have the same distance and you are using the same frequency. OK. So for that type of thing, if you want to calculate signal to noise ratio, this is 1 over Js, a square root of 3n. Then you need an alf. Usually we put 4 for that. And you end up with something like 73.5, which is the same as 18.7 dB. OK. So this is my signal. To, this is how I calculate the signal to interference ratio. Now, if I come to a case that I put sectored antennas, if I put sectored antennas like ideal sectored antennas with like uh, with 135 degrees for each of them, what will happen is that my frequency reuse factor remains at seven. But this JS that I have goes from 6 to 2. Because when I put sector antennas in here, now rather than all six neighbors, only two of them are going to interfere with me. So if we put that, and then we come to our calculations, for n equal to 7, we come up with signal to interference ratio equal to 1 over 2 a square root of 3 times 7 to the power of 4, which would be something like 220.5, which is our 23.43 dB. So this one is almost about 5 dB better than, I mean, if I use sector antennas, I will have a signal to interference ratio, which is 5 dB more. OK? So I can use, you can interpret that in two ways. Number one is that you can say that, OK, now the quality of each users when they are at the edge is better. Or you can say that uh, now I can go to another modulation technique, which is more efficient. OK? Now, based on that, now we go to the other examples that we are coming later. Another, I mean, and another way to do this is that you say, OK, the only, I, fr from the user's point of view, I need only 18 dB signal to noise ratio. And n equal to 7 provides that with an edge of 0.7. OK. So I can go to a system which has more capacity. OK, how can I increase the capacity? What is the easiest way to increase the capacity? Change the frequency reuse factor. OK, if I get JS equal to 2, for example, 
and I use frequency reuse factor of four, how much improvement in the capacity I would get? That's rather than n equal to seven, I have n equal to four. Means that if I have like 100 channel, I divide it by four rather than by divided by seven. So capacity per each cell is like seven over four, which is something what 1.8 times better. Okay. Now, but if I do that, now my signal to noise ratio requirement changes. What is that signal to noise ratio requirement which has changed? Now I have JS is two one over two a square root of three times n, which is now four to the power of four. If I calculate that, I end up with something like a seventy-two, which is eighteen point six dB, which is still acceptable for amp system, for example. Do you, did you follow? <clears throat> this is the first example. I went over that very quickly last time, but I wanted to go over derivations because I think if you want to do calculation, it's good to go over the derivation. <clears throat> and we, uh, we want to continue this style of calculation. This is the simplest. We go to a little bit more complex ones to just see that how you can manipulate and increase your... Uh, or increase your system capacity. So the basic thing is that when I want to do the capacity of the network, I have a fixed bandwidth, fixed number of like fixed number of channels. I can change my frequency reuse factor as one of the things. But if I want to change my frequency reuse factor, I cannot change it arbitrarily because when I change that, something should change. If I have changed like uh, from the omnidirectional to sectored antennas, that's one physical change, which changes this number of neighbors from six to two. So I have like one third time less interference. Now that I have one less time less interference, I can play with my frequency reuse factors to see that how I can have a smaller frequency reuse factor. And that way, I increase the capacity. So in the calculation, always I have to consider that I have fixed number of channels. OK, and something has happened, or create something to change the, uh, change the capacity. Now, now we want to go, that was the simple example, if you use sector antenna. Now we want to go for another example, which is like, uh, also, we went over last time. That's the example of band splitting. But when I went over that last time, I didn't go over the detail of calculation. I just gave you the results. I told you today I want to do examples. So I take this as the second example, and I will go over them. This example that I have in here, you can call it example two this time, is like we call it band splitting. And the splitting. Okay. Now, what we want to do for band splitting is that we want to take advantage of one fact. The fact is that if this is my cell and I do my calculations in this cell, based on this distance r, signal to noise ratio, that is the related to this distance r. OK. Uh, why not I come and when I get closer to the base station, I change somehow the specification of my system, OK, so that I can increase the capacity. One way to change the specification of the system is that change the bandwidth of the system. Let's say that I have like in, uh, in amp systems, for example, in amps, I have something like 395 voice channels. And each of them are what? 30 kilohertz. Do you remember that? OK. Now, for, for this amp systems, 
I needed a signal to interference ratio of 18 dB. Okay, that was the signal to noise ratio requirement for that. Now, one trick that people play is that they say that, okay, if I design this system that when I am at this distance, at least I have 18 dB, when I come closer, my signal to noise ratio requirement is, I mean, I have a higher signal to noise ratio. If I have higher signal to noise ratio, why not I again play a trick? One trick is that I can reduce my band. If I reduce my band, for example, to 15 kilohertz, all over the place, what will happen? My capacity gets doubled. Rather than 395, I will have double of that. But I cannot do that all the places. If I get just so much close to the center, at this area, which is close enough, I can reduce the bandwidth. Okay. Now, what is the relationship between bandwidth and the signal-to-noise ratio requirement? In FM, in FM, signal-to-noise ratio requirement is proportional to one over uh, bandwidth square. Means that it means if I go from 30 kilohertz to 15 kilohertz, kilohertz, I will have one fourth time. I mean, I will need one fourth time more power. Okay, one fourth time more power is like what minus six dB, or four times more power if you want to call it is six dB. Okay. So, if for, for 30 kilohertz, I have signal-to-noise ratio requirement of 18 dB. Then, for 15 kilohertz, I will have signal-to-noise ratio requirement of what? 24 dB. Did you follow that up to now? Okay. So, I, I mean, I did all my calculations so that if I'm in the corner of the cell, I have 18 dB signal to noise ratio. Now, as I come closer to the center, closer to the center of the cell, at one point, I'm signal to noise ratio starts to increase because when I get closer to the center of the cell, the received power increases and background noise is constant. At the point that signal to noise ratio is 24 dB, I can switch from 30 kilohertz bandwidth to 15 kilohertz bandwidth. Okay? So, in the areas which are inside here, in this area, I have 15 kilohertz. And in here, this area, I have what? 30 kilohertz. Okay? So, if I now calculate the ratio of these two areas, I can tell you how much I can increase the capacity of the network. Okay. Did you follow that? Now, so, I have two ratios. I mean, I have this bigger cell and a smaller cell. The radius is, let's say, R15, I call it, and R30. This is the radius for 50. This is the radius for 30. Okay. What is the ratio of R15 to R30? That's the question. Power is related to what? Power is related to what? To the distance, okay? Now, to the power of what? To the power of 4. Okay, if we assume alpha equals to 4, which is the case of like cellular network, often we assume that. So if we have alpha equal to 4, 
The power of these two are inversely proportional to this, okay? And uh, what was the difference between the powers? That was like 6 dB. 6 dB is how much? 6 dB was how much? Four times. Okay, so ratio of R15 to R30 is one fourth. To the power of four is one fourth. Did you follow what I did? See in here, this ratio, the power in here, receive power in here, and receive power in here, are related to this distance, or this distance over this distance, to the power of four. So this distance over that to the power of four. What was the ratio of the two? I mean, if I make the bandwidth half, it would be one fourth time. Okay, so the ratio of the power of R15, from the fact that the ratio of the power in FM, the ratio of the power and the bandwidth goes for the square of the bandwidth, I know that in here and here, I will need like four times more, so the ratio of these two is four times. Followed? So if I solve for this, I will end up that R of the 15 would be something like 0.7079 of R of 30. Followed? Now, if that's the case, if my if my ratio of this distance to this distance is 0.7, I'm not interested in that, really, the distance. I'm interested in the area. Why? Because capacity of the network from the user point of view is number of user per area. Okay? I want to know, for example, how many users are in this area how many users are in this area? The radius is not important for me. I want to know the ratio of this small area to the ratio of the large area. Because that will tell me that the ratio of the number of users which are in here and number of users which are in here, which is related to my capacity. Okay. So if I have R, the distances with this ratio, I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in the areas. Because users are like five users per that area, per 100 square meter. Huh? So if I know that the ratio of the areas, I can compare them in terms of number of users that can, I mean, take advantage of the system. OK? So to t transfer from the R with, to the to the area. How do you transfer to that? Always area is something like, area is something like a cake, like a constant, times R square. It's like a circle, okay? Area is function of R square. So if I want to get the area associated to 15, okay, this would be 0 0.7079 to the power of two, area of the 30. Okay, which in another way, if you make it, I mean, if you make this a square, you end up that A of 15 is 0.5 of A of 30. What is the meaning of that? The meaning is that this area, the top area, okay, has the same size as this area inside. Is that right? Because the total area, this middle area, is half of the total area. So this cylindrical area, this thing around is how much? This area around is how much? Is the same as this area which is inside. They are the same. And these are the areas that I'm interested in. Because when I come in this area, I can use 15. When I go to this area, I can use 30. 
Okay. Any question on that? Do you understand that? So I go to the next page to do my calculation, to continue my calculation. So I have these two areas. This middle area, the way that I calculated, has the same area as the outer area, this outer area. This inner area and outer area are the same. But inside this inner area, my bandwidth is about 15 kilohertz. In this outer, I have 30 kilohertz. And this area and this area are equal A15 and I mean these two areas are equal this area and that area okay these two areas are the same and in here I have 15 in the other one I have 15 okay now I make I want to do like what do I want to do really I want to see that how much my capacity is going to increase I want to calculate increasing capacity in order to do that I come and I say, uh, okay, let's assume that X is number of channels for 15 kilohertz. Or 15 kilohertz bandwidth. Bandwidth. Then, how many channels do I have, do I need for the 30? The same number. Okay? That's the same number, number of channels for 15 and the 30 are going to be the same. So, I have 15 channels, X channels of 15 plus X channels of 30. Okay, and total of that is how much bandwidth? If you go to amps, how many channels do you have in amps? Do you remember? How many voice channels do you have? Like 395 channels. The rest, you have 21 channels which were control channels. Okay, so if I have three, I had 395 times 30. That was the total bandwidth that I had before. Now I have X15 and X30 in there. Okay. Now if I solve for this, X would come up to be two third of 395, which is 263 channels. Okay. So I have 263 channels with 15 megahertz bandwidth, I have 230, 63 channels with 30 megahertz bandwidth, uh, 30 kilohertz bandwidth. So how many total channels do I have in each cell? In each cell, we have 263, 15, plus 216, 63, what? 30. 30s are in here, 15s are in here, okay? Total is how many channels? 526 channels. How, much did I, how many channels did I have for the amps? 395. So if I take 526 divided by 395, I end up with something like 134. This is what? Improvement in capacity. Okay. So this is one calculation that we did. Now what we see is that when we have like, and we didn't have this last part, we didn't have it in the previous lecture. So the first, I mean the concept that we get out of this one is like the way that we can do some calculation. One example to do some calculation. But today I want to solve only examples. Okay. Now. In this example, but the insight that you get is into the issue of relationship between, uh, between 
distribution of the traffic and calculation of this capacity and variety of technology that you can use. In this particular system, what you have done is that you have done inner circle in which you are using a narrow band FM, if you want to call it, I mean 15 kilohertz FM. In the outer circle of each cell, you are using 30 kilohertz. So you have two different technologies in there. Okay? And then you are assuming that number of users per like area is constant all over the place. And based on that, you come up with this type of capacity calculation, which shows that this technique has what 34 percent better. Now the question which comes is that uh, has anybody used this band splitting? Do you remember that? In Japan they have used it. Okay. In the States they were considering that as a competitor for uh, IS-136. Okay. They were considering using like one third of the bandwidth for users. But whether they use it in this structure or not, that is another questionable thing. Because you can change this in, in your design of the network. Now, what is the weakness of this one, this particular technique? This particular is very effective for, uh, for the uh, analog cellular, okay, when it uses FM modulation. Now, uh, if I want to apply it to digital, I cannot apply it. And this is what I told you in the last week as well. Another weakness of this thing is that your uh, cell, cell phone should be able to operate both at 15 kilohertz and 30 kilohertz. With digital implementation of the cell phone, that's not a major issue. Okay, but still, if you have sold everything already with 30 kilohertz bandwidth, those who have the 30 kilohertz they cannot take advantage of this. So those who buy new cell phones they can just take advantage of this thing. Okay. Uh, so this is a typical. I think with this particular simple example, you get typical insight of the fact that cellular networks are like system engineering they have a lot of factors that have to be considered in order to solve one problem it's not only like calculations it's conception okay now how important are issues like this they are very important because when you're talking about 34 percent for example increasing capacity then you can bring the cost like as much lower. So if you, like from the user's point of view, if you're subscribing, how do you subscribe usually? You go to the website and the ones which are 1999, you subscribe. Okay, especially at the beginning. All the services were flat and things like that. Now, if I increase my capacity like 34%, I can bring that money from 1999 to something like $15. It's very, very important. Okay, because it died. I put that pricing for 1999 based on cost that I put on my infrastructure. Okay, in here, with minor changes in infrastructure, just so, well, minor changes. I can have like 34% more income and go to be more competitive. Okay, now this is like uh, one example. The other example in this type of work, which also gives some insight to calculation of the uh, capacity and understanding of the uh, understanding of the uh, system engineering aspects of cellular networks, which are multifaceted aspects, 
is this underlay overlay or the so-called reuse partitioning. Now, what is the story of underlay overlay? Underlay overlay is very similar to uh, to the uh, to the other one, to the band splitting. It's very similar to band splitting in some senses, from some point of view. Uh, what is that some point of view? The point of view is that in here, we also divide the system in two subsystems. Okay, in, if you want to say in bandwidth splitting, what we did, we had two subsystems, really. One of them was 30 kilohertz system, and one of them was 15 kilohertz system. Now, in overlay underlay, using reuse partitioning, we do the same thing, but this time with a different trick. In the, in the splitting, what I had was, like, I had a modem which was 15 kilohertz for one of the one of the networks, let's say on un overlay network, and for the underlay network, I had 30 kilohertz. Okay, so as a result, I needed two different uh, specification for my radio in the overlay and underlay. Okay, now if I use frequency uh, reuse partitioning, I do the same thing. Uh, without changing the technology. Okay. So number one is that what is reuse partitioning? In underlay overlay, the way that we had it for bandwidth splitting, we were just talking about different signal to interference ratio requirement. If I go to, when I get closer to like center of a, a cell, I need less signal to noise ratio, so I change my bandwidth, okay? And when I change the bandwidth, I'm changing my signal to interference ratio requirement. You can get the same argument and go for reuse partitioning. What is reuse partitioning? Reuse partitioning means that I take two set of cells. Again, cell of these small cells, and the large cells. For the large cells, which are next to one another, they are all, the large cells are next to one another. A small cells, there is some distance between them. Okay? For large cells, I use a higher frequency reuse. For a small cells, I use a smaller frequency reuse. For example, when I come in this area, my frequency reuse factor would be 7. When I come in this small area, my frequency reuse factor is 3. How does this thing happen, and how we can analyze that? Again, I think it's a good analysis because, I mean, in any course, especially when it is like uh, but you want to have some examples, numerical examples. This is a good numerical example. So my example right now would be that what I do, I keep my technology the same, OK? But I have the same format. This is like my, this is my uh, big, and this is my small channel very similar to band splitting. What I do is that I have like this large channels, and there is a distance between center of this one and this one. I call it D0. And for these guys, frequency reuse factor, I will use frequency reuse factor of k equal to 7, or n. I used n for that many times. n equal to 7. Then, for the smaller ones, I will use 
فریکوینسی ریوز فاکتر را 3 سو دیس اسمول وان فریکوینسی ریوز فاکتر از 3 means that we have something in between like this this is in here 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 okay and this distance from here to here I will call it D1 okay now then from here to this corner is my D0 R0 sorry and from here to this corner is my R1 so I have four parameters in here D0 R0 then R1 D1 what is D0 over R0 do you remember D0, R0, the ratio of those two, where, I mean, we had it in the equations up here. If you remember, D over R is what? A square root of 3n. You remember? And since frequency reuse factor in here is 7, n is 7. Okay? So I have like D0 over R0 equals to 4.6, which is a square root of 21. Okay. That 4.6, if I put it into equation for signal to noise ratio, like this equation, if I put it in here, SR equals to 1 over 6 D over R to the power of 4 which goes to that like 18 dB I mean in dB it is in 18 dB okay that's 18 dB signal to noise ratio requirement but that was more than 18 18.67 dB but I'm not interested in that right now okay I'm only interested in the ratio of D0 to R0 this one to this one, which is what? Which is 4.6. Now, if I come to the other ones, in here, my distance D1 over the distance R1, R1, this D1 over R1, over this distance. This, I will keep it at 4.6. Because this distance between D1 and R1 is my a measure of signal to noise ratio. Okay? But I don't want to change my technology. Okay? Just even in here, ratio of this R1 to D1, I keep it at 4.6. So this is the first trick. Okay? I keep D1 to R1 equal to what? Equal to same 4.6. So the same telephone can work inside and outside. Okay. But now I want to do some calculation to find the ratio of the two areas. The same way that I did it for what? For a splitting. Okay. In order to do that, I come to here. If I look at the frequency reuse pattern of three, when I have a cell in here, there is another one in here, there is another one in here. So if this is from here to here is how much? How much is this? This is R1. What is this side of this one? How much is that? That's also R1. How much is from here to here? Also R1. Is that correct? Did you follow that? For k equal to 3. Pa these are just next to one another. 
this is R1, this is R1, this is R1. What does that mean? That means that, so, sorry, these are R0s, not R1. R0s, R0, R0. R0 is for the bigger one. R1 is for the smaller one. So, my D1 equals to what? Three times R0. And this is because frequency reuse factor is three. If it was something else, yes, it would get more complex. Huh? So that's what I have in there. So if I take that into account, I come to this equation. I know that <clears throat> D0 over R0 equals to D1 over R1 and equals to 4.6. On the other hand, I know that D1 equals to what? 3R0. So 3R0 over R1 equals to 4.6. Is that right? So this implies that R1 equals to 0 0.622 times R0. Did you follow that? See, I came from here, D0 over R0 is 4.6, D1 over R1 is 4.6. Because in both cases, I have the same amp system. I mean, here I'm assuming amp. I can do it any other thing and do the calculation. No. Then the other issue is that since in the inner one, I mean, I have frequency reuse factor of 3, then cells come up aligned like this so that the distance between here and here is three times R0. This is in here. Okay, I take this one, I plug it in here, so I have this equation. 3R0 over R1 is 4.6. Or in another word, if I solve it for R1, R1 is 3 over 4.6 times R0, which is this thing, R1 equals to 0 0.622 times R0. Did you, did you follow that? The rest is getting now similar to the previous one, similar to my previous example. Previous example, I had what? I had like this bigger area and I had this a smaller area. Okay. Now, in here, I call this one R1. This one, I call it R0. But I'm not interested in distances. I'm interested in what? Ratio of the areas. Huh? If R1 equals to 0.622 of R0, Let's say area in, okay, inside area is 0.622 square area of out, I call it. Huh? This is out area in area, if you want to call it. Huh? If you do that calculation, you end up with 0.43 times A out. Uh, sorry, this is not A out, it's A total. Let me just call it, sorry. This is A total. A total. See, this is the ratio of this one to this one. So a square of that is ratio of the bigger area, means both of them, the inner and the outer area. That is equal to that one, okay? So I have, the ratio of the areas are 0.43. Now I want to again do somewhat capacity calculation. My assumption is that inside here I have uniform distribution in both areas. I will call x this time as total number of channels. I mean, 
total number of channels that I have available. Okay. In one cell, after I divide it in two areas, I call it X. Okay. Then, what is the, in the area inside? Okay. It area inside, inside. How many channels I will have? How many channels I'm going to have inside here? Zero point three forty three of X. Is that right? Because area of here is what? 43% of area of the other one, and I want to have uniform distribution across. Okay, how about this area outside? Out, not total. How about this area outside? Area inside, areas. How much channel I will, how many channels I will have in the area outside? The rest of them, 0.57 times x. Is that right? So the number of channels that I have inside here is 0.43% of the total channels. This one is 0.57% of the total, okay, of the x. I mean, don't make it mistake with this x. In here, I have 43% of the x, okay? Now, these channels which are inside here, okay, what is the frequency reuse factor for them? For the inner one, we had frequency reuse factor of how much? 3. So if I have 0.43x channels inside there, the total channels is how much? This thing's time 3. How about this outer one? The outer one, which is point 57x channels what was the frequency reuse factor for that it was like 7 is that right so this thing equals to how many channels I have I'm talking about amps for this particular set how many channels did I have total 395 huh? did you follow so the basic assumption that I have made is that traffic is uniformly distributed. And then, based on having k equal to 3 and k equal to 7, I calculated this area and this area. Then I said, OK, if this area is used k equal to 3, this is the total channels assigned to these areas. And if this area is using frequency use of 7, this is the total that we use for the 7. So that if I add these two together, I'm 395. Because I have only 395 channels. Okay? If I solve this thing, I end up with x equals to 74.8, which is like 3 times this, 7 times this, and then add it together and 395 divided by that. This is equal to 395 divided by 1.29 plus 3.99 or 94, something like that. Okay. But anyways, x is 74.8 which is like a not a rational number. huh? Now, but this is x, total number of channels. What percentage of that is for the inner? For the inner, I have how much? We have 43% of this. I end up with something like 32 channels. Okay, And for outer, I have point fifty seven times seventy four point eight which I end up with something like forty three roughly I mean 
I have rounded the numbers. Okay? Very good. So, summary, what I have told you is that if I have like this overlay underlay system and I use k or n equal to 3 in here, n equal to 7 in here, I will have like 32 channels in here, 43 channels in here. Okay? But if I was using like, if I was, this is what? Overlay, underlay. If I was not using overlay, underlay, okay? How many channels did I have originally? No. Total channel was 395. Frequency reuse factor was 7. So if I divide it with that, I believe it ended up like 57. Huh? If I didn't have overlay, underlay, I had 57 channels. Okay, so without overlay, underlay, we had, we had 57 channels. With overlay, underlay, we have how much? 32 plus 43 equals to 75 channels per cell. Okay, so this is channel per cell. Channel per cell. So how much increase in the capacity of the network? 75 divided by what? 57 which is equal to what? 1.34. Very similar to bandwidth splitting. Now, very nice. That's very good. Very interesting. Now, uh, what is the advantage of this thing to bandwidth splitting? it does not need different radio. I have the same radio goes around. That's the first one. I did these calculations for amps. Can I do it for GSM? Sure. Can I do it for IS-95? Sure. No matter what is your modulation technique, digital or analog, you can use overlay on delay. So overlay on delay is a very popular method. Okay. Now the question comes that, I mean, again, we are talking about system engineering. Always there are trade-offs. You can never gain something without losing anything. I told you two techniques. One was like bandwidth splitting. The other one was overlay underlay. And for both of them, I was increasing what? The capacity. There was a third technique also. That was what? Using sector antenna which was also, could also potentially change the capacity, okay? So for all three techniques, I'm increasing the capacity. But this is real life. I have to lose something. What am I losing? In all three of them, either bandwidth splitting, or underlay overlay, or like sector antennas. Number one is that I will have more handoffs. Because each time I go from a system to another, I mean, a area to another area, I will have a handoff. Okay? Do you remember what are the problems associated to handoff? We do these calculations based on, like, coverage, which means that we are not considering the effect of multi-path and shadow fading. So in reality, what will happen is that because of and handoff algorithms, all of them, they, they work based on average power, which is the shadow fading. So when I want to go from one of them to the other one, always I have a bond, lot of bounces in there. 
back and forth which are not desirable okay handoffs are not desirable okay you want to minimize the handoffs and the smallest the same the faster the handoffs it has some toll on the system because the network has to send a lot of signaling back and forth to arrange in the backbone to arrange the handoff so I'm losing in the system I mean resources computational resources of the system and at the same time when you have handoff always the signal goes to the margin of a strength signal is weak and customer is not happy okay so as a result it's not a desirable thing so that's the payoff for this one that's the major payoff but if you consider like okay I will accept that then you come to the fact to compare the sector the antenna with like band splitting and with uh, multiple frequency reuse in band splitting you have to make some modifications in the radio modem but in the other two you don't need okay so the other two are much more popular these are very abstract but still they give you the importance of traffic engineering for this type of thing okay generally for traffic engineering you're monitoring constantly you're monitoring the channels and you change the configurations that you can do there are certain things that you can change like I mean if you put the sector antenna you put the sector and it's over okay if you put like band splitting techniques or like overlay underlay it's over I mean it's there cannot change well bandwidth splitting you can change it somehow because that's software uh, uh, sorry not bandwidth splitting the other one the overlay underlay frequency reuse I mean you can change it if you want okay but the most popular one that people change is none of these that's frequency assignment or frequency allocation that's a very popular method for changing the capacity and for that one we had it in the last time we had like we had like fixed and uh, dynamic channel allocation techniques that we just talked about them last time very briefly but I don't have any example today I want to do only examples I did my examples okay but those material I covered quickly but there is no need more than quick coverage for that uh, so I think this is uh, my last part of lecture 3 and it would be appropriate that we take a break now for like 15 minutes and when we come back we start the first part of lecture 4 which is the medium access control